Hello everyone! Today I'm going to show you a helpful way to search records and genealogies on FamilySearch.org. So the first thing I need to do is switch my screen really fast. And here's the home page of FamilySearch.org. You can see I'm signed in at the top and what we want to do is we want to come over to the tab that says search and you see a drop down menu appears. We're going to go ahead and just click on records. When we do that we end up with this opportunity to search historical records, research by location, or find a collection. I'm going to show you how we can kind of combine all of those into um, one quick way to look at things, but is very helpful. So I'm going to start with a broad search for my great-grandfather, Joseph Washcallis. So I'm just going to type in his name, and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter or hit search. And oh look, I have 7,000 plus results. Um, there's got to be a better way to do this. As I look through, I see a bunch of wash calluses. I see Joseph J. I know that this is my grand. This is a grandson. Joseph E. Wash Callus is a son. But what I notice is, okay, we've got some census records, we've got Social Security Death Index, we've got a Find a Grave, we've got public records, we've got a whole lot of stuff all over the place. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a way that you could kind of slice and dice that? Well, there is. It's called click on the Collections tab. When you click on this Collections tab, it takes your total number of results and it breaks them down by collections into a manageable um, piece that you can take a look at. Um, look at what you want, ignore what you don't need. The top, the um, collection that comes up with the top results, the, the greatest number of results, is the one that appears first. In this case, it's birth, marriage, and death records at 4,097 results. And you'll notice all of these are showing the top five. If you want to see all of the results, all you need to do is click on the little link that says show all and it will open up all the records in those collections. But it can be really helpful because you can look through and you can say, hey I know my great grandfather never had anything to do with England and Wales so I don't even have to worry about that one. And I know he never lived in California so I don't have to worry about a birth index. So it gives you an easy way to just pretty much say, okay look at this, don't need to look at this type of thing. And because they're all categorized into collections, it can be a really helpful tool to narrow things down. So what I know about my great-grandfather is he came here from Lithuania at the turn of the century. I know that he was, he was um, here in the U.S. before 1900 and I know that he well, an, a relative told me that he died in 1904. So at some point, I'm going to want to possibly, probably look at passenger arrival lists, things like that, because I know at the turn of the century, to get from Eastern Europe to the US, he didn't swim, he didn't drive, and he didn't fly. So obviously, he, he needed to get here somehow and I'm guessing it was probably by ship. So I'm hoping at some point I will find him in a passenger list. But what I'm really looking at right now is honing in on the 1900 census. The reason why I'm doing that is because that's really, since we don't have an eight, we have very, very few fragments of an 1890 census and Pennsylvania does not have a state census. So I'm honing in on this United States census. The other thing you can do, we've all been told we want to find our ancestor in every single census that was taken during those, their lifetime. So you can multi-select categories. You can do that. You can come up to filter these results and you can watch and those categories, your filter, all of your census records are right across the top. And then what you could do is as you go through and look through, and again I'm seeing Joseph J and Joseph E and Joseph the head, but that was, he. Joseph. this Joseph was born in 1898, so that's actually the son. What you can do is you can go through and say, oh, 
not in the 1940 census, which he wouldn't be because he died in 1904, 1930, nope, 1920, but this can give you a way of keeping track of where you have looked. So what I want to do is I want to take a look at this 1900 census right here. So I'm looking, there's 71 results, and I'm not really seeing anything that looks even close. So I'm going to come back up here, and I'm going to... I'm going to filter by location. All of these on the on this left hand side are filters. You can search with a life event. You can search with a relationship. You can search by location type, film number, all of those things. Um, and and you can also look down here. You can learn more about filtering. We're sitting in collections right now. You can filter by a birthplace, birth year, many different ways to filter, and you will want to play with those with those different filters. But what I'm thinking is maybe I'm going to try location. I know he was in Pennsylvania. So that's the United States. And let's type in Pennsylvania, see if it does me any good. You can see that I've done this before. And we're going to click on update. And great, we got a bunch of Pennsylvania people, but none of them are who I'm looking for. Now maybe the next time I could look for birthplace or maybe I could put in his spouse or anything like that. So what I'm going to introduce to you right now, which you probably know if you are familiar with computers, is the use of wild cards. I played with him forever and ever and ever and could never find him in the 1900 census until I used wild cards. So you can what I usually do, first off, wild cards, you use them to replace letters to get a broad search within a name that might be spelled wrong or differently or, you know, whatever, not the way you expect it to. And if you think about it, when, um, when immigrants came to this country, you didn't always know how to spell their name. Sometimes they spelled it one way, the person heard it a different way. So a wild card, you use a question mark to replace one letter in the name or whatever you're looking and you use an asterisk to replace multiple letters so I did a whole bunch of combinations but what it came down to was this W-A-S-H and then I put in a question mark and then an A and then an asterisk and then an I and an S and then I hit update and look at this, there is my Joseph Wash Callis. Although, this is why I couldn't find him because he's in the 1900 census, he is Joseph Wash Cabis. Well, the wild cards, using wild cards is what helped me find this. You always want to look, if there's an original document, you always want to look at the original. And as we can see here in a second, Come on, make this a little bigger. And right here is my Joseph, okay? So that was an exciting find for me because if you look closely, this is the 1900 census and it says that at least whoever gave him gave the census taker information, he was born in March of 1862. I had no idea. And it says that he's from Poland, Russia, and I did know that says that he came to this country in 1892, but in 1900, as of the census, he was still an alien, and he was a coal miner. And I know that this is him because his wife was Mary. Deli, um, my great aunt, was Della Stein. I have no idea where they got that from, but it's really Stella, Anna, Joe, and this looks like Godoman, but it's actually supposed to be Dominic. So I know we've got the right person. So I was really excited for that. Okay, one, so, if you try, if you get frustrated with all of the different ways to search, try wildcard. Sometimes that is the only way you can find what you're looking for. Okay, so I'm going to show you one last thing having to do with the the public the genealogies. So we're going to come back up here to search. We're going to go to genealogies, and a lot of these are many of us have been given paper records from our parents, grandparents that have become part of the pedigree resource file or the ancestral file or the IGI 
those those um, kinds of records. And so you can search by ancestral file number if you get paper records from relatives that have that number. You can search that way, or you can search um, by a relationship, or you can just do a broad search like I did. And I will I will show you. I did the same thing with Joseph and Wash Callus, but what I did is I used that I used that um, wild card mix up or mash up and because I tried everything else and I wasn't finding him, but I knew he should be in here. We I could add much more, but I decided not to. And so I'm I'm going to look at all. You can filter this to look at the different collections, but I just want to look at all of them. And then I click on search. And there's my Joseph Wash Callus. This is the father that I was looking for in the IGI and his his son. And then this is this is a is another bit. This has more information right here, but it's just it's the same thing. So hopefully this gave you an idea of a couple of ways to search records on family search and also the genealogies. Thanks for watching and have a great day.